Hello, I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got to answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. Rising anger from workers fed up with wave after wave of austerity cuts. The street battles and the battles in the halls of power show a Europe deeply divided over how much pain to inflict to close gaping budget holes and zooming public debt. Mas é meu Europe's é financial minha... crisis topples another government, this time Portugal's, when the opposition rejects a fourth round of belt tightening in a year. Sem pensar duas vezes, o Without thinking twice, the Parliament threw to the trash the advice of the European Central Bank and the Commission. As Portugal teeters on the edge of bankruptcy, the government finally seeks help from the EU. The crisis spooks the markets, driving Portugal's borrowing costs to euro record highs. That puts ever more heat on German Chancellor Angela Merkel. German voters have been punishing Merkel's coalition in state elections, as Europe's biggest economy has been paying the biggest chunk of the bailouts. How dangerous is it all for Europe's leaders, for the euro, and for the European Union itself? Now, wired into this edition of the network here from the European Parliament here in Brussels is Malkus Felbe, a German member of the European Parliament and the CSU, which is a part of Merkel's governing coalition. He's on the European Parliament's Committee on Economic and Monetary Affairs. In Lisbon, João Duc, who's a dean and professor of finance at the Technical University of Lisbon and formerly head of research for Portugal's financial services regulator. And also in Brussels, Kalsten Dreski, senior economist for ING Bank, who's been a regular commentator throughout the financial crisis. Let's start out with João Duc. Uh, João, let me ask you, uh, the, uh, so a lot of analysts say that por the Portugal's finances are not sustainable with these budget cuts. It's causing a downward spiral in the economy. Isn't it time to declare bankruptcy and to restructure? Well, it's time to restructure, at least to do something. To declare the bankruptcy, uh, well, it depends on the help. If we have some help, official help, it, we don't need uh, to, to declare the bankruptcy because it's assumed that uh, IMF, or European uh, Stabilization Fund, will help us to redeem our debts that are maturing okay. uh, quite closely. Okay, Jean, thank you. Uh, Marcus, let's go to you. What do you think about that? I think if uh, there's a need that we have to safeguard the euro, we should do everything. But on the other hand, Portugal has to deliver, according to the rules, uh, additional saving programs. And for the moment, as we don't have a government, as uh, we are waiting for the uh, elections in Portugal, it's hard to negotiate because uh, one should be clear, uh, additional help from the European Stability Mechanism has to be linked okay. with uh, additional efforts from uh, Portugal. Okay, Malkus, uh, let's go to you, Kausten. What do you think? I mean, a lot of people say this, they just can't keep cutting like that and they're just going to run the economy into the ground. I wonder whether the expenditure cuts are really sufficient because if you look at the economy, average growth, 0.7% okay. over the last 10 years, it's, it's very, they have the problem of anemic growth and I really wonder whether the government can combine expenditure cuts together with stimulating the economy. This looks like a very huge challenge, if not to say an impossible mission. Uh, let's go back to you, Joao. Uh, couldn't this actually run Portugal or other countries, Ireland maybe, even Greece, out of the euro? And would that mean the end of the European Union? I hope not. I mean, uh, I think that the measures that uh, we'll, we'll go to take uh, quite soon will impose a strict accomplishment with the rules of the euro. So I think that within one, two years maximum, the economy can be in shape in order to accomplish completely with the rules. Okay, Joao. Now, Malkus, uh, there are a lot of people in Germany who say that these, con these countries should declare bankruptcy, should get out of the euro. What do you think? I think that is not a solution because uh, the debts of Portugal, the debts of Ireland and of Greece uh, would stay, continue being in, in euros. So uh, they have even a higher burden to bear uh, than they are joining the Eurozone. And uh, seriously, we have helping uh, measures for those not joining the Euro. Of course, we need helping measures for those joining the Euro. But one has to cl be clear, okay. those economies have to be strengthened during these right. uh, safe programs. Okay, Malkus, let, let's, let's go over to Calston now. A lot of people say, well, yeah, why don't they, they, they get out of the Euro? But wouldn't that cause a big train wreck? 
I think really for, for these countries, leaving the, the euro is not an option. They wouldn't be better off outside of the eurozone. I think, but of course you can ask a different question actually, would it be uh, interesting for core eurozone countries to leave the eurozone and, and leave the periphery behind? No, that's, that's a good question. Now let's uh, actually go uh, to all, all three of you, starting uh, again with uh, Joao. Um, there, there are uh, calls for uh, the European Union perhaps to institute some kind of economic governance, but that requires a change in the treaty. Do, do you think maybe that's impossible, that, that not all countries would approve that treaty? I don't know if they will approve, but I, what I feel is that we are in between a bridge. The, econo the economy of Europe will, cannot stay as it is, so we cannot keep uh, this path from a single, uh, single countries with uh, different debts, uh, different budgets, uh, into a si with a single currency. Either we go back altogether or we go forward. And this means that we'll have okay. to improve the measures and the strength of the central government. Right. Malcus, uh, uh, Angela Merkel would like some changes in that treaty, but come on, let's get realistic. There are a lot of countries that wouldn't approve that, right? Realistically, you are right. There's no chance changing the treaty, so we have to do everything which is possible inside the existing Lisbon Treaty, and I think there are a lot of possibilities in strengthening cooperation without changing the treaties, and that should be done now. Okay, but uh, Carlsen, I mean, realistically there, is, can you really do what you need to do without changing the treaty? I think it, it is really very, very tricky. Um, and how, how, I think really the, the, the national countries are not up really to see an economic government at the European level. Um, right now, of course, everyone in, in Germany would agree to tell the Greek and the Portuguese what to do. But I wonder whether the German public is up to having the, the European level tell the German public what to do. Okay, Malkus, let's go back to you now. Uh, Angela Merkel has, uh, with other leaders, approved this permanent rescue mechanism by 2013, but she didn't approve the funding. Uh, 2013 is an election year. Is it time she showed leadership, or is this a political reality for her she has to face? No, of course, uh, there was an agreement in the last meeting of the head of states uh, how to finance the uh, European stability mechanism. So I think it's not a problem, and uh, Germany knows what it has to do. But on the other hand, uh, other member states should know what they have to do as well. So we are in a good shape with the others. Okay. Uh, Joao, you have these 13, 14-month salaries. You've got lack of competition, bloated budgets. Is this not a blessing in disguise? Well, uh, it... It seems, but our 14-month payment, uh, if you compare with the, the, the yearly payments that you have in Europe, well, uh, we, we will see, we will notice a big difference. Anyway, it's true that the Portuguese economy is not a competitive, and this is what I think that we need from these measures, from okay. IFF, okay. IMF, and the European funds. Yeah, Zhao. Okay, Carsten, is this, is this realistic that actually countries like Portugal can continue the way they are out of not being competitive and still be in a European Union that's supposed to be competitive? I think it's, it's very hard to achieve, uh, and, and we probably we're going to see some kind of debt restructuring. The only question is whether, really whether also, especially the German government will tell the voters. So here's a, a choice has to be made. Either it's moving Europe towards a federal union, a fiscal federalism, where the, the rich pay the bill for the, uh, the poor, or it's not, and we keep national sovereignty, but then it would be, mean that we have to accept debt restructuring in periphery countries. There are some people who say, look, it's time for the German government to get real and say to the voters in Germany, we're not only just bailing out Portugal, we're bailing out the ba German banks that have lent billions to countries like Portugal. What about that? Every state has its own responsibility in being competitive and to have a safeguard on the public debts. And that has to be done. And uh, it's not the, the easy way that Germany pays out everyone at the end of the day. That will not be a solution. Okay, thank you very much, Malkus. Thanks to all of you for joining us. That's all the time we've got for now. This is a crisis not likely to end any time soon. I'd like to thank our guest, German MEP Malkus Felbel, Professor João Duke of the Technical University of Lisbon, and ING economist Kalsten Dreski. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with the network. Wow.